The personal guards of the rulers, the creators and undertakers of the emperors, left their deep mark in Roman history. The name came from the term Cohor Praetoria, the tent or headquarters of the commander. Guards repeatedly overthrew their majesties and enthroned new ones. Emperors tried to recruit their guards among barbarians. The term barbarian was not a swear word for the Romans. They called foreigners who did not know Latin and wore beards. The first intelligible mention of the guard dates back to the time of Gaius Julius Caesar. During the conquest of Gaul in the Civil War and on a trip to Egypt, he used allied Germans from the tribe of UBI and Spaniards, Celtiberians, to escort his person. The Germans guarded all members of the Julian-Claudian dynasty. Only once did Augustus replace them. In 9 AD, after his defeat at Teutoburg Forest, he could not trust them. In different periods, the guards of emperors were Franks, Alemanni, Batavians, Goths, Huns, Armenians, Parthians, Scythians. There were also cohorts consisting of Roman citizens, but as a rule, they held leadership positions. Every legionary dreamed of becoming a Praetorian. Their pay, conditions of service and retirement were understandably much better. Praetorians swore allegiance to the emperor, which did not prevent them from carrying out coups and assassinating protected persons. Their victims were Caligula, Commodus, Caracalla, Heliogabalus, and a number of other less famous rulers. But there were also cases of devotion when the guards avenged their murdered patron. It would be wrong to represent all Praetorians only as direct body guardians. In the narrow sense, they are thugs with guns at the door of the highest chambers. In the broader Praetoriani, a very complex structure that performed a variety of functions. This included units engaged in political and military intelligence and counterintelligence. These agents were called speculatores. They collected information about political opponents and the mood of the crowd. If necessary, they spread the required rumors. Disguised in civilian, speculators listened to conversations in the streets, amphitheaters, and circuses. They often speculated, provoked harmful conversations, and on their basis, imprisoned or executed people. Military intelligence agents extracted information from neighboring states about armies and economies, as well as launched false information in fulfillment of the main Roman principle, divide and conquer. Of course, the service Praetorium included a cohort of field agents responsible for the delivery of imperial mail, as well as officers for special assignments. These centurions carried out delicate missions, handing victims the emperor's suicide order, or directly, secretly, or openly, they carried out orders to physically eliminate an undesirable person. With their assistance, Messalina, Agrippina, many undesirable pretenders to the throne, many senators and horsemen ended their lives. More delicate officers arrested suspects and conducted investigations, usually under torture. In addition, the structure had financial departments in charge of the funds of the guard and the economic security of the state. Probably, they were also engaged in the fight against corruption. The guards were commanded by prefects. This position was one of the highest in the empire. It gave the opportunity to hold higher positions in the civilian life. Middle and lower officers after several years of service could also count on sine cura, a duty without worries. Roman chroniclers also write about the participation of Praetorians in military actions. In almost all battles, they won victories, showed fortitude, training, and high efficiency. It was a force, sometimes poorly managed, but one that everyone had to reckon with and flirt with. Some things haven't changed since then.